Hello everybody and welcome to the first episode of a new podcast slash video series called Things That Can Fuck Off. It's a very simple concept. I read out a bunch of things that really need to fuck off and then explain why. And I also invite you to contribute things that can fuck off for future episodes. Basically, if this podcast was made about five or more years ago, it would be called something like Get Into The Sea, which is a phrase that is so old and overused, it can fuck off. Now, I'll try and make this podcast balanced, that's the idea behind this, without being clearly very left-wing or very right-wing or whatever, so the maximum amount of people can therefore enjoy the podcast, but as you'll see after listening to this first episode, I found that challenge quite hard. Hmm. Now, the idea is that these episodes are short, they're lo-fi, they're just easy and quick to make, and they're frequent with no visuals at all. If you're listening slash watching via YouTube, there's nothing going to happen on your screen. It's just me talking, but there'll be lots of jokes. Don't worry. I use different subject matter each time. Today's subjects that can fuck off are very topical, but I could literally pick any topic that I feel needs to fuck right off. Uh... Uh, anything at all ideally this would be a weekly show but long time subscribers of mine know not to rely on predictions like that from me it could be next episode could be at any time uh, finally this will be available in audio form on whatever podcast service you that you use uh, i'm hoping to put it on spotify within 24 hours if i can and if you do fancy listening to this in audio form and you can't find it on your podcast provider please let me know and i'll add it to whatever service that you use uh, the first thing that can fuck right off is long podcast introductions, because even when you love the presenter of your favourite podcast, if they bang on and on and on about stuff in the introduction, you do tend to find them a tad annoying. So, without further ado, I should take a sip of my drink. Breaks in podcasts can fuck off. Things that can fuck off. Episode 1, Planes, Trains and Automobiles. Let's start with planes. Um, things that can fuck off uh, are the plane that's taking the refugees to Rwanda. Or in this case, it's things that can't fuck off because a plane containing migrants bound for Rwanda it was rapidly whittled down from about a handful of migrants to zero people and the plane went nowhere. And um, most people who aren't fucking cunts found that hilarious. Priti Patel, the Home Secretary of the United Kingdom, said something along the lines of, I'm determined that this flight will take off even if only one person is aboard. And with one statement, she, and the fact that it's a Boeing 747 plane, with one statement, she really showed the Tories' commitment to tackling climate change, didn't they? Now, obviously, when you've got a story in the news um, that contains stuff about immigrants, you're going to get a lot of far-right people shouting and screaming and I know I said this is going to be a balanced podcast but one thing we can all agree on is it's really fun and cathartic and the right thing to do to take the piss out the far right so if there's any of those listening now you're not going to enjoy the rest of the podcast or anything I ever produce so there's two options you can either fuck off follow the rules of the podcast and put yourself in that bracket there fuck right off or you can carry on listening and get really annoyed and leave me an angry comment at the end and i tell you what i'd love if you love it if you did that because i don't have a life and i find it really fun to take the piss out of you guys in the comment section so bring it on okay um so don't fuck off is what i'm saying um the far right will say um things that generalize which i know is hard to believe they say things like they want open borders, don't they? They being like political opponents of them, um, or anyone who isn't far right. No one, literally no one wants open borders. It's a desperate straw man argument from anybody that you see online acting that way. I see a lot of grifters do this kind of thing. Oh yeah, yeah, everyone, all the left, they just want open borders. We don't want that. Well, no, they don't want open borders. Um, just to remind you, Jeremy Corbyn is not in charge of the Labour Party anymore and he hasn't been for a while. Get over it. And then they, they talk about how the migrants are men, um, specifically the ones from Africa, the brown brown ones, which is like a double whammy for them, the male migrants. Uh, now that is code for thieves, rapists, criminals and stuff like that. All these male migrants coming over here, it's it's really quite annoying, isn't it? I mean, I mean, technically it is hard for old women or 10-year-old girls to travel 4,000 miles overseas in a dinghy, but let's ignore that, shall we, for now? 
Now, the plane didn't take off after a late intervention from the European Court of Human Rights. Cue some very angry people asking, how is this allowed to happen? If we did a Brexit, surely they, the EU, can't intervene. And the answer is, it's irrelevant because the Rwanda policy was always meant to fail. So newspapers and the government can blame the failure on the left. It's apparently, uh, by the way, I'm not making this up. This is the way it goes. If you're listening from somewhere that isn't the UK, we have become America in in our politics, uh, especially America America from 2016 to uh, 2021. The Rwanda policy was always meant to fail, so newspapers and commentators can blame the failure on the left. Now, apparently it's a feeble way to do some kind of culture war thing, because the other option is to actually address illegal immigration, which the Tories have no intention of stopping whatsoever. Yeah, I don't like this European Court of Human Rights. It can fuck off. The European Court of Rights can fuck off. Hang on a second, isn't that the same European Court of Human Rights that your hero, Winston Churchill, helped found. You know, the guy, that if someone attacks his statue or calls him a racist, you'll lose your shit about any criticism of your hero. But you're ready right now to remove the one thing in his legacy he'll be remembered for other than the big war. Well done, you. Now, like I say, it was never meant to happen. And somehow, Pretty Patel fucked up an immigration policy policy that she never intended to see through in the first place, which is quite a new low for the government. Now, think about how poorly the Ukrainian refugee policy has been handled in the UK. We basically invited all the refugees from Ukraine to come over. I say all, probably five or six, ten, ten refugees from Ukraine. You can come over here and you can stay in our houses. As long as you sign up to this policy here that we've, we've created, you can have them come over and they can stay in your house. Not immediately, you know, it's going to take a while. No, not a few days, not a few weeks. It's going to take about four or five, maybe six months. Uh, you probably give up the ghost by then. They might even have died, you never know. Or, you know, they'd be in some kind of sort of camp um, in, in, in like Europe somewhere, like a holding cell. Um, uh, but these are sort of mainly white people in a holding cell. So theoretically, the far right should get quite angry about it. No, nope, no, nope, they're silent about that. No, 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 they're focused just on the brown guys. OK, it's fine. Let's move on. Yeah, people sign up and wait months and months to house a de- desperate person fleeing from a war. So just to clarify, what makes you think the reverse of that policy, sending mostly black refugees away from Britain, was going to be successful based on the Ukraine policy fuck ups? They can't bring people in. Do you think they're really going to take people away at the same time? Um, but yeah, for balance, things that can fuck off. Gammon edition, the European... A court of human rights can fuck off. Now, there's a screenshot of a tweet that I post regularly on Twitter to annoy the very, very worst people online. And it's dated a week before the Brexit referendum took place, uh, June 19th, 2016, which uh, it says, it's got Nigel Farage saying, On Thursday, let's vote to leave the EU and take back control of our borders. Six years later, it's amazing that millions of people still don't think they've been lied to. It's quite incredible. Um, Taking back control can fuck off, is is what I'm saying. Sorry, it already had six years ago. Um, Now, I'll just quickly talk about my parents. My mum and my dad, they both have voted Conservative their entire life. Never even considered voting for Labour. I don't think they even voted for Tony Blair that one time uh, that he he first came in. Um, And my mum, she generally, every time I go and see her, which isn't often, um, I'll take the piss out of her voting for Brexit and ruining my future and everyone else's and the fact that she likes the Tories and so forth. Just, you know, a bit of banter towards the parents. And she's always quite staunch in her hatred of the other side. So the fact that Labour had Jeremy Corbyn um, for that period of time, he was the opposition to Boris in the run up to that election. She was like, "Oh no, no, I made the right choice because I mean, I'm never going to vote for Corbyn. So what, what other choice did I have? I'm going to vote for my man. Of course I am." And I went to see her last Christmas, and it's the first time ever. And please bear in mind that my mum never swears ever. She's very middle class. She's very prim and proper in that sort of sense. And I and I did my thing. I said, well, it's going well, isn't it? All this uh, politics stuff. And she just, she just stopped what I was saying. She said, look, if I realised that Brexit would be this bad, 
then I wouldn't have voted for old bollock face, she said. And she, she was just adamant that he has completely ruined everything. And that was Christmas, and it's now June, and he's still here. So that goes to show you how fucked we are as a country. Now, I, I, now people who follow me on Twitter, that's at Sir Woofingtons. Um, the links are below. Um, I, I don't know why I changed it from anti-social media um, to that. It seems to have worked. People um, <laughs> engage with me a bit more. Um, I usually post an image of the movie Don't Look Up, the Netflix movie starring Leonardo DiCaprio and um, what's her name? That, that lady's in everything. Um, the, the, it's a movie about the environment, obviously. Um, but um, I post it when online grifters attempt to dismiss climate change. Very simple. They're saying, oh, net zero, blah, blah, blah. Oh, we're not all going to die. So I post Don't Look Up. Very simple response. Um, but now if I post don't look up, then don't look up means don't look up because there are no planes. Now, I stupidly responded to a grifter mocking a protest about the Rwanda policy. Uh, Most people there with their placards uh, didn't like the policy. And a reporter was going around asking the crowd, would you take in a refugee? And most of them said, I, I wish I could, but to be honest with you, I don't have enough room in my house or I can't afford to and stuff like that. And it's very carefully edited to make the people there look like fucking idiots. Um, and basically, it's just an excuse for racists to shout the word hypocrites. Therefore, as this is a balanced podcast, I'm going to have to add hypocrites to the list of people or things that can fuck off. OK, if these people say they love refugees so much, why don't they just move to a bigger property and let 20 immigrants stay with them rent free? If they love migrants so much, why don't these hypocrites move out of their own homes and sleep on the streets so the migrants can move into their house and leave the fridge full of food? OK, you don't want to look like a hypocrite, do you? Now, I was expecting some backlash from racists because that's who grifters aim most of their uh, content at. But the sheer amount of anger I got from that one tweet about the uh, Rwanda protest was quite astonishing, really. One guy, who shall remain nameless, compared two types of refugees, you know, together, to prove to me that he wasn't racist. Two separate types of refugees. He compared them so he would not appear racist to me. He made a massive effort to do that. And he said, and I quote, the risk to host people, people who host refugees, from documented Ukrainian women and children and OAPs is virtually nil. (laughs) But you cannot say the same for undocumented third world adult males, can you? There is a difference, and it's nothing to do with skin tone, so don't even attempt to go there. Well, unfortunately for you, I'm going to go there, okay? So this is a guy who, his argument was, if you have Ukrainians with documents, you know, so they're like, you know, everything's in order, and they're women, children, and OAPs, you're not at risk of being hurt by them, or or beaten up, or bummed, or whatever, you know. But But the same can't be said for undocumented third world adult males now i don't know if you noticed but he didn't include men in his uh, ukrainian roundup there of any age uh, not children he's included children but of any age from like teenage upwards it's a bit weird isn't it And, and he said there is a difference it has nothing to do with skin tone well i suppose you could say that if you just focus on the gender thing but you have mentioned they're all from the third world, which does sort of sum up you know, the fact that they're probably not white. I replied by saying something like, mate, you gammon are really clever, sarcastically. And without a shred of irony, he replied with something along the lines of, there's no need to be racist. Gammon is a racist word. And, and that's it. That is basically, that is banter. No, discourse in 2022, isn't it? Between two people with different political leanings okay you mentioned that they're angry all the time and use the moniker gammon which i mean i've already made a video about it it's not a racist word and a racist will accuse you of being a racist to shut down an argument about racism and them being racist it's in many ways the only clever thing gammon have ever done because you then have to spend about fucking four hours explaining why gammon isn't a racist term and they will just repeat again and again and again uh, their opinions about it. They won't take anything on board that you say um, and just accuse you of being racist without the fact that 
you know, I am a white person myself taking the piss out of another white person. I mean, in my book, that isn't racism if you're the same colour and you're not talking about race. But, it, you know, you try and explain it to him. He goes in one ear and out the other one. Now, next, trains can fuck off. Trains, planes and automobiles. You following? OK. Now, train, train-wise, train um, I was um, I booked a train um, to go to London from far, far away, where I now live, um, for the 25th, which is Saturday, which, of course, is now a strike day. So I had to change that booking, and I had to pay double the amount. So that's um, basically 75 quid I've lost um, because of changing my tickets. And there's going to be a lot of disruption, and it's really annoying. And I don't really care, is the is, is my opinion on that. Uh, trains can fuck off because they're so expensive, but the strikes that are happening now seem to be justified for anyone who is um, not rich. You'd think, well, yeah, if you want a bit of extra money um, in the cost of living crisis days where I've just it's just been reported that food is going to rocket up in price, I'd say that's quite a good good argument at the very least, that argument for a better, better pay rise, a bit of a bit of a pay rise, but people are focusing on train drivers because they get paid quite a lot of money, even though they're not in the in the same unions that are on strike. None of this matters, of course. Um, they get paid more than nurses, so they can fuck off. Is what um, all the commentators are saying. Same commentators who clapped for nurses during the COVID days on a Thursday at seven o'clock, remember that? And then refused to give the nurses a pay rise directly afterwards. Yeah, those guys. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Um, But what about people who want to get to work, is their argument. People want to get to work, the poor bastards. I'm on side of the workers, say mostly right-wing commentators. That's the same commentators who attack journalists that don't share the same politics as them. The same commentators who attack attack GPs, train staff, police, teachers, nurses, lecturers, airport staff, civil servants and anyone who works at home. And when you bear in mind that most newspaper columnists are carrying out those those attacks whilst working from home, I'm sure you can see the irony. Anyway, there's a very strong argument that the Conservatives do not want to get involved with the train strikes uh, and the talks. So that's why they inevitably failed and the strikes went ahead. And the two reasons behind that logic is one... It distracts from Partygate, so they're literally using another fuck-up that they've... Sorry. So they're literally using a fuck-up they've just created to cover up a fuck-up that's already occurred. It's logical. It is what they do. And the second one is to shift blame. Uh, Unions have a relationship with Labour. Sometimes it's a distant, sort of fractured relationship. Sometimes they hold hands and kiss and buy each other ice creams and so forth. But for the Tories to actually allow rail strikes to go ahead... That allows them to then say, well, why has Keir Starmer condemned these strikes? The unions are on his side, clearly. If you think about it, the strikes are all his fault. Remember, guys, rail strikes, Brexit chaos, food price rises, unaffordable petrol, high energy bills and airport carnage are all the fault of the left who have been in government for 12 fucking years. And they hold all the power, say the Tories who are in charge of the country. Remarkably, after I made that joke on Twitter, someone called Richard replied with the following. Excuse me, but if Labour had built more nukes when they were in power, tackled illegal economic migration, then yes, things would be better. Strikes, food and petrol price rises and airport carnage are happening all around the world, actually. You need to be less insular. Yeah, Yeah, that's right. That's right, mate. Everything is Labour's fault, despite not being in power for over a decade. Even stuff happening abroad is Labour's fault. Mate, just Google Brexit and airports and you'll be able to see how Labour managed to make matters even worse than they did in foreign lands. Insular indeed. Insular. Automobiles. They can fuck off, can't they? Cars and stuff. The price of petrol is at its highest ever, despite a 5p cut in duty. So petrol itself can fuck off however i don't really have any jokes about that so instead i'm going to tell gary lineker the car driver and purchaser of petrol at some point in his life that he can fuck off yeah um there's a a a tweeter called northern lass who has commented about gary lineker's lack of self-awareness being comical because he said uh, there's another heat wave over europe and elsewhere records broken year on year We're like a cancer patient who knows there's a tumour but prefers to ignore it and hopes it goes away even though it gets larger every day. 
Hashtag don't look up. Gary, you no longer can fuck off because you're using the same terminology as me. I love it. A really smart, clever person replied to him. Um, His name is Oliver. Qatar emits the third largest amount of carbon dioxide per capita of any country in the world, around eight times as much as the UK. So I assume you'll be boycotting the World Cup. I'll be there to report on it, not support it, says Gary. I doubt many journalists that are sent to Ukraine are pro-Putin's war, but they still do their job. This is such a ridiculous argument, he, he you know, obviously points out. To which uh, the Northern Mass says, how are you going to get to Qatar, Gary? <laughs> Checkmate. I mean, he can never travel anywhere, can't he? Using any conventional method, because that would make Gary Lineker a hypocrite. Until all wokey wokes swim to their destination, they will always sound like hypocrites. I want to see, personally, I want to see Alan Shearer on a space hopper travelling over continents to get to the World Cup. Otherwise, I will never respect him. I am very clever. Um, A lady called Samantha has pictured uh, Gary Lineker... Um, it's a picture of him in shorts and holding a cup of coffee and he's just closing his lid of a car, you know, the petrol lid of the car and it looks like a normal car to me. And so Samantha has said, if Gary Lineker is suddenly so concerned about climate change, perhaps he could start by switching out his six litre Mercedes for an electric car. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, fuck off, Gary Lineker. You, you, bar- oh, hang on. Uh, I'm just reading that he has got an electric car. It's an electric mini. It appears the photo mocking Gary is several years old. It's really out of date. Um, but, um, but but you can still fuck off, Lineker. I mean, how did he get to the electric car dealership? Yeah, I bet you, bet you didn't fucking swim there, you jugged cunt. Huh? Yeah. It's remarkable, isn't it? How many gammons suddenly believe in climate change when there's a lefty to mock? Straight after that, they'll go back to denying that climate change is a thing. Brilliant, brilliant logic. Actually, Gary Lineker haters can fuck off because remember when Gammon said to Gary Lineker, if you like refugees so much, why don't you let a few stay at your mansion? So he did. Yeah, Gammon went a bit quiet after that, didn't they? Anyway, that's the first episode. Um, It was supposed to be 10 minutes long and I've got it at about 20 odd so uh yeah, there you go <laughs> if that's acceptable to you and you like this kind of thing and you haven't already do subscribe um you know if you really want to you know show some support for this you can share it on social media and if you really really want to show support for this and encourage more episodes and maybe you can drop me one dollar yes i'm not picky i just it's cost a living crisis just that every little helps and such one dollar via my paypal account and the links are below or you can subscribe to my patreon and uh, you'll get a lot of um, extra bonus goodies for free and it's a uh, something like one dollar a month which is like 70p it's nothing so yeah thank you very much for listening um i'll see you next time and do remember i also have videos available and you can watch loads of those the next video i'm going to make is going to be about transphobic comedians um are they transphobic or not and it features Dave Chappelle and um, Ricky Gervais. So I think you know the answer to that. <laughs> but it is quite an in-depth uh, look at their um, routines and um, what people have been saying about them and whether I should defend or attack them, basically. Um, that will be out whenever I can be asked. It's going to take a while, to be honest with you. So in the meantime, look out for the next one of these. And until next one, thank you very much for listening and the latest, baiters. <laughs>